be able to keep on track with all of that, but please prompt us if, if we're missing anything. Um, in, in relation to Head 14.2, um, this is the designation of marine protected areas shall be without prejudice to existing rights, basically existing authorisations. Um, from the outset, can I say, I think this is a problem for everyone and a huge empathy <coughs> and concern for industry and, and all, all sorts of actors within the marine environment um, who have gone to the bother of, of getting applications, going through that whole process, seeking investment, you know, uh, creating expectations within within their organisations and their shareholders, etc. Um, and uh, one can understand their, their need and their desire for legal certainty. Notwithstanding that, as we said in our opening remarks, um, the MPA designation is unfortunately horribly late in Ireland. Uh, it's over nine years late, and by the time we actually get around, I think everybody realistically in this room knows that by the time this legislation is enacted, you know, given the various different consultations, etc., etc., that are going to happen, it is going to be some time um, before we actually have designations <coughs> on the ground. So, what is the implications from sort of a legal perspective? Um, and what do I see as being of concern in relation to the way Head 14.2 is framed? Well, basically, the EU Court of Justice is extremely clear and has been clear from way back when the Birds Directive designations were late, not just here in Ireland, but in, in across other member states, that a member state cannot benefit from the delay in its obligations. I mean, it's set there explicitly in, in the likes of Bas Corbière, uh, French case, the C37498, paragraph 51. It's there in black and white from the Court of Justice. A member state cannot benefit from the delay in delivering on its obligations. So we are where we are, to use your words in one of the earlier sessions, Deputy, um, and it's an unfortunate reality uh, where we have that intersection of where the science is telling us that an area should have been designated as MPA. It's potentially incompatible with something that's been given permission to. Um, and there's a whole pile of, a whole range of issues are going to arise with this. And this is why it is extremely frustrating for us that a more proactive approach wasn't taken to the delivery of the spatial plan and in mapping out areas which, you know, manage the expectations, particularly of offshore renewable energy in relation to where they could go and couldn't go based on a precautionary basis given the gaps in our information and, and we argued very heavily for that at the time um, but the the simple fact of the matter is lots of it, different issues could arise depending on the various different scenarios one of which would be state liability um, where basically if a wind energy company is development developed and invested it may seek to sue the state basically for its loss of expectation because EU law will require us to remedy a breach of EU law. So we can't walk away and just sort of say, whoops, sorry, we missed it. There is duties very clearly articulated and, and particularly so in the context of Ireland. Um, some of the most authoritative uh, judgments of the court or the most comprehensive judgment of the Court of Justice uh, in, in rehearsing and, and clarifying these points uh, are in relation to the likes of Derry Bryan Wind Farm in C21506 and 26118. Uh, and it makes it very, very clear, and, and it's not limited to those cases, I might add, that you have to remedy a breach. So it's not just a case of whoops, apocalypse. Um, there are consequences, you know, um, and that, that needs to be addressed. Um, the, the, the economic operators may seek to pursue state liability. You can imagine the number of zeros that could be involved in that. Um, and, and that's already an issue uh, in, in respect of a whole range of other issues within the terrestrial environment where, where there have been problems. And basically, it is the taxpayers of this country that en end up footing the bill in that. But the Court of Justice has also been clear that state liability is, is not just an automatic presumption for, for economic actors. Uh, if they have had, you know, unless they can, you know, demonstrate that they had a reasonable understanding that their, their consents were lawful, uh, and that they had a reasonable expectation that everything was in order. Um, I, I don't see that as being credible to, to, you know, in the context of the airing of issues that there is around the inadequacies of designations in Ireland. So I think we're going to end up with a very serious mess. And that's why it's all the more important, particularly at this critical point in time, where on December 23rd we have seen the, the, the granting of maritime area consents under the Maritime Area Planning Act. Um, and we're, we're expecting to see, you know, development consent applications go to on board Planola or on board Commission as our, our plan 
on Commission Planola, as it, as it may be called, um, soon. Um, and, and it is really incumbent that we actually address this because this is a car crash. This is, this is, is going to delay and create confusion and uncertainty in relation to industry's expectations of what it can do, our, our migration, our successful migration to decarbonisation. Uh, and we actually manage, we, we need to be realistic about saying we can't just leave MPAs to Paddy Last. We've seen this government, you know, move at breathtaking speed to enact legislation, at breathtaking, shocking, scary speed to enact legislation, guillotine legislation, force things through when it needs to. Um, why do MPAs need to be left so long? Why are they being so deprioritised? Um, and we need to actually see that being expedited. So sorry it's a long answer, but it's